Welcome to Intune Training, where Jake turns a page. Hey! hey. Just like in a book? Are we reading something today? Oh, we're reading about graph. Okay, reading graph. Uh, that sounds interesting. We all know that's what you're doing, Jake, is you're reading a script. Yeah, I just go to the docs, man, and I just like kind of read off what's there. Um, unfortunately, there's not necessarily a lot for a reading lot of a script as you write at. a script, and that's why our our true. That's true. why what we say is just so intelligent. I'm guilty. I, I I cannot disagree. <laughs> now we're gonna talk about uh, pagination uh, today. Kind of an interesting uh, topic. We're, we're uh, talking about what pagination. Who? Um, so pagination is pretty interesting um, when it comes to like APIs because I'm sure you're used to like you know your normal graph uh, command or not necessarily graph commandlets but your normal like PowerShell commandlets. You run a you know command and it gives you what you want. Um, graph, you know, it's an API. There are like limitations in place. You're not like grabbing a million entries uh, whenever you run a specific task. Um, on the Microsoft side of things, you have a limit as far as like the results that you can get when you're doing these queries. And in this case, it's a thousand results. If you have more than say, like, you know, a thousand, like we're going to look at apps, but like, let's say you've got more than a thousand apps, you have to utilize, you know, something called pagination. Um, okay. You know, you're only going to get that first thousand results and the rest you got to kind of look at. Um, so we already have some stuff, you know, pre-written out as far as. Uh, the script goes again we'll include this in the github repository that you'll be able to download later um but like right off the bat let's just go ahead and do like our authentication there we go there we go let's do our device-based authentication beautiful you want to off as myself so that we can access ben is a wiggle well a backup guitarist for the wiggles but beautiful. i mean that still counts so there's an interesting thing that we should note there on row 15. So instead of up, so for the purpose of, you know, dramatic effect and keep to keep the demo up simple, instead of us adding thousands and thousands of apps to our Intune tenant, we decided to artificially drop the number of apps returned to five. But we obviously have way more than five apps. So this is how we can show how the pagination works yeah and that's that this piece here specifically the question mark we're grabbing the top five that we get uh nothing more uh, except for the next page link which we'll see in a second um but if we go ahead and, and you know run these two lines and then run our app equals invoke rest method and we'll give it a second to run the cloud is lightning fast a little bit of sarcasm there but if I return just apps, I've got like like this in interesting data. Um, it doesn't really mean much right now. Um, we see like an OData context, an OData account, and an OData next link. The next link is important because that is where um, the actual like link out to the next five apps uh, exists. Uh, but we can actually see like, if I do like apps.value, um, the five apps that kind of come in. Now that's there's a lot of information in a single application, so it looked like there was a lot. Uh, but if, you know, if we just do a simple like apps dot count, um, oh value dot count, we see five. Mm -hmm. Got our five apps. Uh, we obviously want to get additional ones. Um, so we're going to right off the bat say, hey, our applications are equal to apps dot value because we want to get some additional information there. And the application next to link is equal to that O data next link that we saw towards the very beginning. So if I kind of scroll up through all the application stuff, it's that O data next link that we see here for the next page, essentially. So we'll run that. And this is where we get into the fun. We're doing a while loop, essentially. But essentially, you know, while that next link is not equal to null, and I know I'm going to get in the comments that this is not the correct way or the best way to do a not equals to uh, with the null being on the right. Um, but that's how we're going to do it today. Um, you know, there's a million different ways to do this. We'll get into some other options uh, a little bit later. But we'll go ahead and run this loop. So essentially, while the application's next link is not null, um, we're going to go ahead and say get the next five apps. Um, and the URI that we're passing in isn't this device app management mobile apps anymore. 
it's the next link uh, option. So actually, if we do applications next link, if I could type, you know me, I'm great at it. Um, we'll see, you know, there's that next link page. That's like the graph endpoint that we're now calling. Um, from there, we'll simply add the results to our apps value. Um, so we're going to essentially get more than the five at that point. And we'll go ahead and run that loop. I'll give it a little bit because, again, we definitely have more than five apps. And so if I can just kind of call this out, you didn't have to do anything different to get that OData next link. Just once you exceeded your page size, it created that, right? Yes, correct. So if you have more than a thousand results or like whatever value you set as like a top, that's you're going to get that link no matter what. So you could essentially build this into any script, uh, regardless of if you expected five results or 50,000. Yeah, correct. You could look at like building a module that's like all it does is like do pagination for you. Um, there's a million different ways uh, to look at it. But in this case, you know, pretty basic example. So we're just doing a simple while loop here. And it but, was a million different ways with a five page count that would take 200,000 pages to get there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Quick mental math there. Yeah. I'm not going to check you on the math. I'll believe you. It makes sense. Hopefully but... no one else does either. It's probably <laughs> wrong. But uh, so that ran for us. I mean, now we can go ahead and do like application.display name and we can see that, hey, there is a lot here. Um, and I'm like, let's check the count. You know, 285. Like I had mentioned, a lot more than five applications. Um, but, you know, we got all of our results. Um, this, again, super handy. Um, I see plenty of scripts that go out there for like on blog posts, and I'm guilty of this myself as well, um, like blog post scripts, like, hey, this is how you do X, Y, Z inside of, um, you know, your tenant, or like, you want to do this. And it's like, that's really cool if I have a really small environment. But for some of those larger organizations that have more than like a 1000 users or a 1000 apps or a 1000 devices, whatever you're looking at in graph, uh, it's kind of limiting, you kind of got to add that yourself. And if you don't know about um, you know, pagination and things like that. You wouldn't know that you needed to add that until you went and looked at the data and you're like, hey, there's a whole bunch of stuff missing. Why? Just to be clear on this, you don't need to have tens of thousands of apps or users or groups or any other object in Intune and Azure AD to have to use this. If you have a thousand and one of something, you will need to use this because it's over the 1000 object limit. Exactly. Um, I do know that there are a few links, um, and especially when you look at like uh, other APIs as well, um, they will tell you like, this is the default like amount of things that we're going to return, um, or like the max limit that you can set on those, you know, particular calls. Um, graph, I think I'm pretty sure 99% sure of the most of them are just all limited to that thousand. Um, but again, when you start looking at other APIs, you'll notice like, hey, there's a count value that I can add into my um, query up here or like, you know, how many things can I return? Um, and it's not going to say necessarily, oh, data next link. It might be just like next page, things like that. Um, but you'll you'll catch on to that when you start working with some other APIs. Now, we got everything here. Uh, we kind of talked about the fact that there are other ways of doing this. Um, this is by no means the best way. It works, um, but not definitely not the speediest or the best. You know, what if something bombs out in the middle of it? Um, you know, definitely not uh, going to be uh, helpful there. But we do, and it's it's kind of topical, but there was a tweet um, that Merrill put out recently, um, you know, when he was doing uh, the graph module um, at, at first. So he's doing like, hey, get managed devices, and then the top 999, um, you know, instead of the default 100 to try to make things go a little bit faster. Um, and he kind of, as you read this tweet, goes in like, and it's like, hey, don't use the graph module, which sounds familiar. Yeah. Uh, I think we feel like at we're the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning of the series. Um, yeah, so don't use the module. It doesn't get updated very often. It's outdated. Um, you know, do the actual query um, directly. But we'll, and we'll link this tweet uh, as well down below. But um, he does some pretty interesting things um, as far as getting the reports and things like that. Uh, and I haven't dug into it a lot myself. Uh, Sean Johannes, you kind of want to talk to the effect of what he's doing here? Yeah, sure. So if you scroll down a little bit, essentially what you'll see is he's caching out that OData next link 
And what he's able to do by that is if it's dropping out partway through the script, he's able to get, just get the content of that cache file and start right back where he began. Um, because essentially what's going to happen is that that's pretty much going to stay the same each time. And so when you get that next link, that's going to then include another next link, and it'll just let you resume where you left off, essentially. So uh, this was one of those things I found real interesting, because how often does this happen? You know, How often do we see things bomb out? How often does PowerShell lock up or... You know, something else happens so yeah or you look at orgs with like hundreds of thousands of devices you know i wouldn't want to have a command running for a good you know two three minutes have it bomb out and have to start over again now let's pick off where we left off uh, so that's that's really cool to see yeah but and i know there's the github repository down here as well and again we'll include this down below um but it's uh pretty cool stuff and again obviously 10 times more robust um, a little harder to read if you're not super familiar with PowerShell, but again, a million different ways to do it. But having said that, I think that kind of covers everything that we wanted to talk about. Yeah, I yeah, think so. I think so. Cool. Well, awesome. Obviously, leave a comment down below. We'll link everything down below. If you've got questions, ask away. I'm sure Ben is going to comment before we even get a chance to. Um, I, by the way, I know he's excited to get on at some point in the future to talk about, um, you know, different authentication methods and Azure functions and a whole bunch of other stuff. So cool. Cool. Adios. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>